Uh, hello all. Uh, my name is Thanasi Anetsu, like I'm from Greece. I work as a researcher uh, in Argonne Security Group at Athens Information Technology. And I'm also doing my PhD at CTIF University in Albrook, Denmark. Uh, today's topic uh, will be about discussing and describing an attack tool that is capable of compromising the security profile of a wireless sensor network. Its basic functionalities include passive monitoring of transactional data, actually sniffer, and most importantly, the ability to launch various kinds of attacks against these networks. Also, one more important characteristic is that it can be applied uh, to different sensor hardware platforms, so actually it's uh, really portable. But before we describe this tool, we are going to talk the th about the theory behind the tool, so we are going to talk about some attributes of the sensor networks that can be exploited by an attacker, and we will describe all the data that are monitored in the capsule by our tool and actually used in order to extract important network information about its functionality, node IDs, and such stuff. And uh, also, since hopefully uh, I'll try to, to do a live demo of the tool, okay, we'll see, I have a toy network over here, so we'll see what uh, is the setup of this toy network. Okay, so first of all, starting with a brief uh, overview of wireless sensor networks. I don't know how many of you know about this kind of networks. Okay, so actually, a wireless sensor node is an embedded system okay, with a microcontroller and, and an attached radio unit. Okay, as you can see the figure, okay, it has all of the components of a typical embedded system. The different stuff over here are the sensors and the actuators, which are actually hardware for monitoring an attribute of interest in a specific area and uh, the corresponding handlers for handling the events coming from these sensors. Okay, since the energy is not one of the strong aspects of sensor nodes, okay, network application and routing uh, underlying protocols are really lightweight in terms of memory and energy. Okay, so the, most of the times these are ultra low power devices. Okay, you can see some uh, sample hardware platforms. Okay. We are using the third one, it's called T-Mode Sky. We chose this as a concrete example, and actually because this is the hardware that I have access in my university that I will bring here. Now if we take a set of such sensor nodes and we deploy them in large areas of interest, then we have a wireless sensor network, which is able to self-configure itself and adapt to different kinds of changing. This is really important because usually when we deploy sensor nodes, these are deployed in thousands and usually in areas that are not easily accessed by humans. So we need them, once deployed, to be able to configure the self, start uh, working, and actually adapt to environmental changes, node shifts, and this stuff. Uh, in terms of communication, we have multi-hop, a main-to-one communication between the nodes, and actually there will always be more than one path for communication between the nodes and the destination, which is actually the base station hall, so we have mesh networking. Example applications are uh, smart grid, Sensor networks are uh, really used in the military, especially nowadays. Okay, and uh, monitoring uh, wildlife or structural health building monitoring. And nowadays the trend in sensor networks uh, is uh, using them in combination with RFIDs okay, in order to build the so-called uh, smart environment, smart homes, smart cities. The last thing is uh, why sensor networks are good for us. Okay, first of all, I think the most important is because with a relatively small amount of money, since most commercial nodes are uh, cheap, we can cover a large area of interest and, interest and monitoring a number of uh, attributes through events. Okay, they consider to be really robust against node link failures because, as we said, they have mesh networking. So even if a node fails, there will always be an alternative path from another node to the base station. Okay, and finally, a user can have access to the data inside the network from wherever he wants. It's not necessary to be close to the network. Okay, so sensor networks are particularly suited for detecting classified and tracking applications. They can provide for a dense spatial tracking in order to identify and monitor a moving object. And also, even in the case that the nodes produce a large amount of data, there are a lot of algorithms that run inside the nodes that provide information aggregation and data validation. Okay, so this was uh, the overview of the sensor networks. So let's move on to the theory behind the tool. Okay, so actually first, 
will describe the security challenges of these networks, their attributes, some of their attributes, the most important, that are exploited by the attackers. Okay, first of all, since all, uh, all transmissions are done wirelessly, they are exposed to attacks like eavesdropping, interception, alteration or replay of data, and injection of malicious packets, okay, code injection. Okay, sensor nodes are uh, most usually they operate in an unattended environment, so again they are exposed to physical attacks. They can be easily compromised by an attacker without the administrator actually knowing about it. Now, when we deploy sensor networks, again, most of the times, we don't have any prior knowledge of their topology. Okay, so it's totally random. Again, this can be used by an adversary because he can change the position of the nodes and actually leave an area of the network empty so there will now be a path for communication between some of the nodes besides of this area. So finally, hard to protect them against uh, insider attacks okay, because once deployed, an attacker can go there Okay, compromise the node, use tools like the one here, which is a JTAG, for gaining access into the node's memory. Okay, this can lead to possible identification of memory code vulnerabilities, okay, which in turn can lead to attacks like code injection. So having all these things in mind, okay, the research community, what they did is they proposed several defense mechanisms okay, that try to prevent and protect these networks, however, against specific attacks. Okay, but this is not enough. Okay, every day is a new day for the attackers, so there are always new kinds of attacks. The existing attacks are every day happening with a different and better way, so security holes always exist. So that's why they moved one step further, and they started to implement intrusion detection protocols, which actually don't uh, prevent the attacks from taking place. Okay, they let them happen, but then they try to monitor abnormalities in the network functionality, so they try to identify that something is wrong. Okay. However, both of these mechanisms, okay, none, of, none of these mechanisms, try to identify the risk posed to the network's confidentiality by the availability of all the data inside the network. Okay. So what we've done, first of all, is that we have implemented a sniffer for capturing and logging all these data that are available in a sensor network. So we overhear the network traffic, okay. we capture it, we monitor it, we log it, and we then we try to process all of the transmitted packets in order to extract important information about the network nodes and usage. Okay. So how can the sniffer can be used in order to compromise the security of a sensor network? First of all, uh, an attacker can use the carrier frequency okay, in order to launch a side channel attack and try to identify the network underlying sensor hardware. Okay, so an attacker can use either a, a spectrum analyzer or different sensor hardware attached to the, to the laptop running the tool. Like in this case here, I have attached a sensor node. Okay, so in, and then he can find the communication frequency used in the network. Once he discovered that, okay, since commercial nodes use specific frequencies to communicate, she can uh, determine what is the underlying hardware and then she can use all the protocol vulnerabilities that are used with this specific hardware. Second thing is that the, by observing the message rate inside, and size inside the session network, okay, so this can reveal important information about the network's application and the frequency of all monitor events. Uh, this might constitute a severe threat because for some sensor applications, like health monitoring, again, which is a hot trend nowadays, uh, using sensor networks in, uh, in health, uh, with, about health monitoring, okay, monitoring the patients. Okay, those, this can reveal, this can lead to violation of the user's privacy. Okay, also, uh, with the message rate, okay, an attacker can use the sniffer in order to estimate the rate that she overhears messages coming from a particular area. Okay, in that way, she can estimate the distance okay, from the sourced event. Okay, there are a lot of papers and research has shown that uh, the message reception rate increases as the distance to the node that is actually reporting the event decreases. And finally, what we are trying to capture inside the sniffer is the route information. Uh, these are packets actually that are used by the other underlying protocols in a sensor network. Okay, actually, they are used for constructing the communication path between the nodes.